I have been stranded in Antarctica and I shall be surviving the next 100 days over here. Temperatures here literally reach negative 160 degrees Fahrenheit. What the dog doing? Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Our objective isn't to only survive, but to also defeat all the bosses on this map. The Broodmother, Megapithecus, Dragon, Manticore, and Ice Titan. So yeah, we better get cracking. Our journey started by punching a beaver in the face. Team stop! Day one and we're already pissing off the wildlife. And doing your typical arc noob stuff. Erecting a dispenser! I tried making friends with a horse, but he ran away. I instantly fell in love with this map when I realized crops grow in the wild, meaning we will never need a greenhouse. And let's be honest, we all hate building greenhouses. Power leveling was the next plan of action, so I whacked my strong and sturdy pe- I mean hatchet- against some rocks, which allowed me to craft cooking pots. After, I attempted to tame the horse we saw earlier, but he ran away and never returned, just like my father. We did however make a new friend, far superior to that stupid horse. Whilst waiting for the pteranodon to land, I harvested a dead carcass of an unlucky basilo. Yo. What is this? This gave us a lot of spoiled meat, which would be very useful this early on. The Pteranodon finally landed, and this time we made sure not to miss. After we bowl at his poor soul, we lobbed some rocks at his head, knocking him out. He will become ours in no time. Raptors were lurking a bit too close to our soon-to-be Pteranodon, so I led them to an unlucky Parasaur. Rest in peace, Parasaur. <laughs> As day one came to an end, our new friend was all tamed up. Oh, and he is tamed. Let's go! To celebrate, I cooked up some meat, as I love meat. We may have nearly lost our pteranodon, but all was well, as this chase led us to a trilobite. Hello, Gary. Did you just take a shit? Cool. Granting us with enough chitin to later craft a saddle for our boy, the Pteranodon. After shooting an arrow through the skull of the Pteranodon's cousin, I crafted two forges and placed them right beside some metal. Pteranodon was getting lonely, so I tamed him a friend. I also called him Pteranodon. Now that we had some metal cooked, I crafted a smithy along with some metal tools. We were making some serious progress. A set of flax soon followed. Flak day two. I am definitely getting all the milfs. Now satisfied with all the gear I crafted, I picked up everything and flew off in search of a place to call home. We soon came across some crystal, which allowed me to craft a spyglass. Spyglass. Epic. I may have gotten our first tame Pteranodon kill, but we have no time to feel sorry for our fallen soldier, as we must remain focused on our mission, to defeat all the bosses in Antarctica. I spotted a red drop in the distance, which I went over to loot. I may have broke my monitor, when I realized I was still too low of a level. I'm gonna break my monitor, I swear! I did spot some griffins, it turned out they didn't like me staring at them, as I was attacked. Uh oh, oh, run, 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 run. It's a 65! Run! It's fine though, we all know Drizzle clutches up, and we indeed survived. I started venturing into the snow, in hopes of finding a higher level Pteranodon. No good Pteranodons were found, however we did spot an Argentavis. An Argy, okay. After eliminating this angry cat, <coughs> I parachuted down from the snow mountain, as we were freezing. Who would have thought it's this cold in Antarctica? I then came across a tunnel filled with metal and crystal, which meant setting up a base nearby would be perfect. The small plateau right beside the tunnel shall become our new home. I placed all my belongings inside the smithy and stuffed my mouth with cactus sap. Cactus sap. <laughs> I then farmed up an Argentavis trap, as taming one would excel our progress by 69 million percent. I found the Argy we spotted earlier, follow me, and let him out of the snow. I then cranked some 90s, and let the RG right into the trap. Yes! He's trapped! The dumb bird fell for it, and we started knocking him out. We may have run out of trank arrows, so I resorted to knocking this dude out with my bare hands. Yes, 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 yes! Yes! We did it, boys! I wanted to fist even more dinosaurs. What? So I went crazy on some nearby dodos. This parasaur shall become our new friend, though I fisted him as well. Hey! I named him Parasaur. Parasaur was an absolute beast at farming berries, meaning we can now craft a lot of narcotics to tame even more dinosaur friends. That's right, it's day 4 and we didn't even die once. We're en route to accomplish great things in these 100 days. Our new Argentavis tamed up and we instantly flew him back to base to farm a lot of that tasty metal. We did nearly die to an insect swarm, but we're too good, and as always, clutched up. After our metal run, nice. I harvested some stones to build a gate. This will ensure that our perimeter is secure. 
Once that was done, I placed some foundations down so that we could begin placing some forges. Six of these things would be more than enough to get a good amount of metal cooking. All we needed to light these forges was some hard and sturdy planks of wood, which we got by killing an entire tree. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. I'm very sorry, Greta. After enough metal cooked, we crafted a long neck rifle along with some trank darts. Remember that dodo we tamed? You think he survives a shot to the boys? Was... Oh. He won't be missed. We did find more wild vegetables, which our parasaur couldn't resist biting into. Let's just say, we're never going hungry again. I spotted a nearby basilo corpse again, which granted us with spoiled meat once again and other useful resources. I also took a dip into the water and quickly remembered why I never go swimming in Ark. Our day got much better when we looted a drop, giving us an upgrade to our current primitive crossbow. That is actually really good. This new crossbow will make knocking out dinosaurs like your mother way easier. On our way back to base, I shot a level 110 Pteranodon in the head. I'm a tired. Once back in our humble home, I realized we had nothing protecting us from the falling snow of Antarctica, so I started building a roof. Whilst crafting more ceilings, I went to check on the knocked out Pteranodon and found a Dilo munching on our new friend. No! Oh, you piece of shit. Oh my. We did just about save him and got revenge on this stupid Dilo by feeding his dead corpse to the Pteranodon. Even though this Pteranodon was pretty solid, I still wanted to explore this map on something way quicker than a Pteranodon. So I set my eyes on the griffins we came across earlier. We spotted a level 85, so I shot an arrow at it to hopefully lure it away from its friends. This wasn't very successful as they both began chasing me. Luckily for us, his friend wandered off after a bird, leaving the level 85 alone. This is when we struck. I took my chances and led him back to our trap. Knocking him out was going well, until the most sane person in Ohio grabbed me by the teeth. We made quick work of the maniac and finished knocking out the griffin. I made sure to put spikes around him, ensuring no dilos will ruin our day this time. A racer was slaughtered for prime meat, which the griffin loved. By the way, the chances of the melee coming out this high were about 0.0000069%. Let's just say we got extremely lucky. We killed some of our griffin's friend and an alpha carno, which gave us a lot of XP. We later spotted the mantis which was slain for its polymer which we shall soon need to craft better gear i started exploring more of our surroundings coming across two spinos which are griffin one tap holy crap that's a lot of damage i then spotted an anki which we soon knocked out the exact same thing happened to a nearby Dodicarus. Whilst waiting for them to tame up, I ventured into the snow area of this map, which as you can imagine, was the largest part of it. A pyramid structure instantly caught my eye, and right beside it was a little terminal structure that upon using it, teleported us inside the pyramid. Yo, what? I was a bit confused at first, and thought we got teleported somewhere super far. I'm not very smart. Boys, I have never seen anything like this, what? Entering this pyramid was a big eye-opener, as I discovered all the bosses that we would need to take down. Ice Titan, I'm guessing these are, I'm guessing that's a dragon, that's a Megapithecus, that's a brew, that's a Manticore. So we need to beat each one on Alpha difficulty to spawn the Ice Titan, and that would be the final boss of this map. We flew back outside, and oh boy it was cold. Our HP disintegrated in seconds. I decided to teleport back inside, as it was way warmer there. Desperate times indeed call for desperate measures, such that I decided to eat some narcotics to regain some HP. Confident that we had enough HP to survive, I made a run for it. Let's just say I was terribly wrong. Just to know. Oh, what? We're gonna die. No! After rethinking my life decisions, I crafted a set of hide and hopped on my Pteranodon to get our griffin back. After whistling him back to safety, I dashed down to retrieve my loot and I vouched to never return to the snow till I crafted some fur armor. By now, our Anki and Odicarus were all tamed up and now became farming slaves for the rest of their miserable lives. Once back at base, I quickly tamed a Bronto, which shall be a massive upgrade to our berry farming operations. Today was the day we got our very first electronics from an unlucky tech parasaur. I clearly don't keep my promises as we ventured back into the snow. What can I say? Curiosity indeed gets the best of me. On the perimeter of the snow area, I spotted a cave. Upon venturing inside, I found a cave drop which granted me with absolutely nothing. I was scared to head deeper inside, so I rushed back out on my griffin. May this be a lesson to all of the Ark players out there. Never, and I mean never, fly in the redwood. Oh! 
I can't even place. No. Our Terra came in clutch once again, and we soon got revenge on the big cat. I was making my way out of the redwoods till. No! Again! Are you serious? Yeah. Don't ask how I survived, but I shit you not. Only two seconds after, and. No, again! Art, a phrase used by someone typically on the verge of shooting his monitor with a high caliber rifle. Three Tylas after each other. How is that even possible? Thank god I made a super move. I am never going into the redwoods again. I found another cave, which we would keep in mind in case we wanted to move base later. Not too far off from the cave, I spotted a skeleton of a stego. I tried harvesting it, but that didn't do anything. However, I did receive the insulating warm buff. The only farming tame left on the agenda was a beaver. So we tamed up not one, but two of those fat b****. They weren't even the best of levels, however, they'd do just fine. Once back at our shit shack, we did our first metal run with the Yankee, and oh boy, was this good. Little bro was farming like his life depended on it, which it did. I also crafted some nets to make taming that much more efficient. The first dino to get trapped by my nets would be a 140 Argent Tavis. Whoa! Oh my god, bro, I forget how cold it is in here. Anyway, I decided to use my brain and lure the stupid bird out of the freezing snow biome. One net later, and this beast was knocked out. I used my second net on a 145 griffin, and even though I managed to trap and knock out this absolute beast, he still found a way to ruin everything for us. After picking up the RG that just finished taming, I went to check back on him. Dude, what? Where's my griffin? It went under the ground. Nah, bro. It's at the bottom of the ocean. How does that make any sense? After crying myself to sleep, I logged on the next morning and killed some mammoths to craft a full set of fur armor. I even made a spino fly. What? I I can fly. <laughs> what is this game? Towards the end of day 13, I spotted a snow owl, which I couldn't resist aiming. After lobbing a net on it and cranking some 90s, we soon had ourselves a new friend. As day 15 started, I explored deeper into the snow. Now that I had full fair armor, I wouldn't be dying as quickly. I wanted to start creating a boss army, so any U Tyrannus I came across would need a quick level check. Sadly, this one over here was only level 15. Right beside the UT was a cave, and once inside, I soon realized that it was an ice wyvern nest. Even though both eggs were low level, I still decided to snag one and discovered that ice wyverns have the ability to live inside the mesh. I'm stuck in the mesh. I quickly got bored of this place and left without looking around me. This wasn't my smartest decision as we missed the opportunity to explore this wyvern scar even deeper. We will come back, trust me. I soon found out why all the previous explorers never made it out of Antarctica alive. What is that? A flying dodo headed wyvern with 1 million HP. I honestly don't know what's worse, that or the ice titan. After going back around the dodo wyvern, I came across a corrupted area, which also had a great rex spawn inside it, which would be super useful for taming rexes or a boss army. I spotted some griffins, which looked super annoying, so I ended their life. I took a quick look at the wyvern scar once again, but this time the wyverns weren't in the mesh and sent me running home like a little girl. <gasps> Day 17 marked an important day, as we tamed our very first Teresina, whom we named Bob. Days 18 and 19 were spent taming dinosaur army stuff like Megatheriums and UTs, but I forgot to record it. Our insane dino hunting didn't stop there, as on day 20, I spotted the love of my life, your mother. A level 150 no. Managarmar. <gasps> oh, boys! Yes, 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 yes. Taming this thing was as easy as it gets. Nets are truly a survivor's best friend. You also probably realized that I have a better griffin. I also forgot to record that. This majestic beast tamed up in the morning of day 21. 37 melee is actually so good, yes! And oh boy, did we suffer from some good old morning wood. I came across a giant hole. This thing was wider than your mom. I did what Drizzle does best and penetrated the hole. Yo, this is dope. As I penetrated the hole even further, we came across large green crystal. Right beside them was an opening into a huge cave. Hearing reapers screech around us nearly made me run away like a little bitch. But I decided to grow a pair and carried on inside. Sometimes growing a pair of balls isn't the right decision. Art, a phrase used by someone typically on the verge of shooting his monitor with a high caliber rifle. Our trusty Pteranodon came in clutch once again. Luckily for us, our griffin landed in a safe area and didn't die. Once back, we hopped right on the beast and got revenge on all of the wildlife that assassinated me. 
Hard work does pay off, I guess, as we found our very first artifact. Sadly, I couldn't penetrate the cave deeper as we started getting kicked off our griffin, so we turned back. We saw a car key on our way out and kept that in mind for our next hole penetration. Once back outside, I took a deep breath of the fresh outside air. We finally found a good red drop, granting us with a journeyman compound bow blueprint. Boys! Upon reaching our abode, I placed down a tech jump pad, which increased the value of our property by 69%. Following that, I tested out our new mana garmar. She was an absolute machine, easily tearing through some spinals. As I dashed deep into the snow, we came across two megatheriums. They were both very low level, but we still tamed them because they were females. And I love females. By the time we ventured back to the shit shack, it was already day 24, which went pretty uneventful. All we did was bounce with our mana on the jump pad and farm some berries. The next day, I wanted to craft shocking trang darts, so I hopped back on the mana and beamed a few jellyfish. When I say beamed, I mean beamed. These ugly sea creatures got boxed. After checking the progress of our megatherium army, I crafted up shocking trang darts. And oh, Oh boy was I excited to use these things. On our way to continue exploring the island, I beamed a giant fish. I won 45 UT, a sight so rare I couldn't even believe it. Sadly, its HP was horrible. We did however tame a Teresina. It wasn't a good level, but I still tamed it for breeding since it's a female, and I love females. Later in the day, I found out the wyvern scar had another entrance, which was filled with all types of wyverns. This shall be incredibly useful for farming tributes for the manticore. Our day became even better when we went drop hunting and found a megatherium saddle blueprint and a crafted pump action shotgun. I really wanted to fight the wyverns so i rushed back home and crafted a gas mask this shall protect our fragile human body from the gas balls that the poison wyvern shoots i decided to enter from the side entrance as to not fight all the wyverns at once as we entered a 180 ice wyvern lashed right at us we managed to freeze it for a while but it was getting in some good damage on us so we dashed outside to increase the range from this beast and dealt with it swiftly a level 10 poison also got sent to the gulag. Beamer was severely injured, so we had to heal him up a bit with our owl. Once little bro was healed up, we charged back at the enemy, eliminating all the wyverns without much trouble. Luckily for us, there was the egg of the 140 lightning dragon. Does it say 140? I think it said 140. So I snagged it and couldn't wait to harness this beast's powers. After conquering the wyvern nest, we tamed up a really solid UT, which we shall definitely be using for boss fights. A Procop also met the same fate, being tamed by the man himself, Drizzle. Day 27 was spent taming stuff for boss fights, which went well. Bruh. The following day, I decided to grow a pair of balls and take a deep dive into the ocean. The experience was pretty boring, apart from finding all the crystal Heisenberg cooked up. You got one part of that wrong. This is not crystal. I made sure to kill more jellyfish as I wanted an infinite supply of biotoxin. And by this time, our lightning wyvern was all tamed up. We named him Zoid, and Zoid melted through everything he came across. Day 29 was a day of farming and taming. Yeah, it wasn't very fun. The next day I started by farming some tributes for the boss fights. And I know what you're thinking. It's only day 30, but we have a lot of bosses to do. So starting early is going to be essential. If you're confused on how I kill the two so in the water, so am I. We also found a great male Teresina, which shall be perfect for breeding. Whilst waiting for it to tame, I trapped a Giga, cause yeah, efficiency is key. Even with shocking trang darts, this thing took ages to knock out. And by ages, I literally mean the entire night. By the time this beast went to sleep, I've fallen. our Terry tamed up with a really solid melee stat. I forgot how quick the torpor of a Giga runs out, so I panicked and stuffed 100 narcotics down its throat. Another Giga was stupid enough to fall right for our trap, so we slaughtered it. Our Giga tamed up with 27 melee, which is pretty terrible, but would do for the time being. Taming a Giga soon got to my head, as I thought I was invincible and tried doing a weird parkour trap trick on this Karka. Yeah, we ended up trapping ourselves. I tried my best Cryo Beamer, but all my efforts seemed useless. I flew back heartbroken, knowing that we shall be seeing Beamer's dead corpse rolling down the snow mountain. But it wasn't there. I looked around for him and couldn't spot him anywhere. I looted my body and it turned out we just managed to cryo Beamer just in time. As I always say lads, Drizzle always clutches up. Anyway, I trapped the Karka again and started knocking it out. Yeah, not my brightest moment. For whoever doesn't know, Karkas are passive tames. I definitely cried myself to sleep after this one. Oh my, what have I done? 
<laughs> when I woke up from my miserable sleep, I hatched a baby Teresina, which came out with bad HP. However, we shall still keep it, as it's a female and we could use it for breeding. Later on, we came across a good contender for a future base location. I really wanted to live in a cave this time, as I really enjoy penetrating small holes. Huh? Right beside the small hole was a yellow drop, which gave us insane fur leggings. Day 34 was the day I would finally try to tame a carca the right way. I managed to trap the beast and fed it a rhino body. It nearly tamed just from that, so I rushed and grabbed an Argentavis corpse. Sadly for us, it munched the corpse, but this had no effect whatsoever on the taming bar. I also tried a wyvern body right after, but yeah, for some reason this thing didn't want to get tamed. By now, its taming bar had gone all the way down, and to make matters even worse, I nearly tamed it again, but it just stopped wanting to eat. Yeah, I wasn't having the best of days. After the carca jumped out of the trap, I had enough, so I trapped it again and slaughtered it. The rest of day 35, and pretty much all of 36, were spent farming wyvern talents. The following day, I appreciated all of our hard work and farmed a ton of narcotics. Day 38 was the day we finally got a mate for Beamer to have sex with. Once back at home, we were breeding in peace till this happened. Whoa, 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 whoa! Protect the baby! <laughs> run, run to me, run to me, you're safe, you're safe. Attack! Attack! Kill him! The whole gang is on him. Yeah, we have another one, we have another one. <laughs> Luckily, our dino gang had our back, and I made sure to gun down the remaining trespassers, as this is America. The day ended in style when we looted this drop. <gasps> oh! Day 39 started with more wyvern talent farming and we were getting pretty close to the amount we needed. After, I ventured into the cave we entered a while back as it supposedly had all the artifacts we needed to summon the manticore. I penetrated the crack deeper and deeper until I found them. By the time we pulled out of the cave, it was day 40. Day 40 and we still have 5 bosses to defeat. We need to pick up the pace or we shall definitely be failing this challenge. Our base was looking hella disorganized so I cryoed everything and threw them back out in an orderly fashion. Our army of Terry's and Megatheriums kept growing. The next day, I got our hands on two rock drake eggs, including a 170. Thinking about it now, these things will never get used. For all the rock drake fans out there, I'm sorry, they are just inferior to most of the mobility tames in the game. Whilst wandering around in the snow, I came across an extremely good looking cave. We shall definitely build a base in here. I also realized that we had been passing over these cyan looking rocks, which I had never seen before. So I decided to pull out my big and stiff hatchet to harvest these rocks. I got pretty excited when I discovered this new resource, but it turns out it is completely useless. Our day became a great one upon opening a red drop. <laughs> Days 43, 44 and 45 were spent breeding our Terezinas and Megatherium armies as well as farming up even more wyvern talents. We also managed to get hold of a 170 lightning wyvern. Day 46 started off with some gruesome metal farming. The rest of it was spent exploring the underground where we discovered a massive aberration like bio. Whilst exploring it we came across a pink gem looking area which I couldn't enter for some reason. Let me in. Let me in. We also discovered a magmasaur pit, which only meant one thing, there must be magma eggs, but we couldn't find them anywhere. We even tried taming a bloodstalker, but it didn't work out very well. Eat me. Dude, no. What, what? It's not even taming. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. Discovering more artifacts was of course a massive win, as we were getting closer to summoning the bosses. By the time we exited the underground, we had enough artifacts to summon two bosses. We were blessed with a 145 female mana, which we obviously tamed up. On my way to farm the last talents we needed for the manticore, I blundered. Oh my... I'm dead. Yeah, this wasn't my brightest moment. We did end up managing to get back to our body and successfully farmed up all the remaining wyvern talents we needed. Before leaving the trench, I made sure to embarrass myself once again. Ouch. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Okay, we saved him. I'm dead. Day 50. We are halfway through and I don't know if I should laugh or cry. The following three days were spent doing our final preparations for the Manticore boss fight. I needed to get my Teresinas ready for the Manticore. So apart from giving them a motivational pep talk, I wanted to craft sweet vegetable cakes. Luckily for us, this map produces lots of natural vegetables. And for those who are unaware, sweet vegetable cakes heal your herbivore dinos. Like a lot. Our Terries also needed saddles, so we crafted a lot of these things. Power leveling was the next plan of action. Goddamn, nearly 
10,000 HP and 1,300 melee damage, the Manticore was in trouble. Installing an auto clicker made this a piece of cake. The last thing on the list was to heal all of the Terzinas, so I headed out to tame a Daedon. I might have gotten sidetracked and tamed a Mana Garmar instead. Hey, at least we can finally breed one up. We did eventually find a high level Daedon and made him our own. On our way back to base, I got sidetracked again and ran into a tree. A few minutes after, Beamer gave birth, and after killing a Spino with our new fat pig, we healed up all of the Terrazinas, and it was finally time to face the Manticore. Just kidding, we still needed some honey to craft veggie cakes. After crafting a sh ton of cakes, we grabbed everything we needed and summoned the Manticore. Three cakes each. No idea if that's enough, but hey, this is what we're working with. <laughs> so, here goes nothing, boys. Oh my god. <laughs> huh? At first I panicked and thought all of our tributes went to waste. Bro, I am so confused, bro. You guys should hit this or something. Oh. Oh! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! To make our chances of winning even better, I dashed over to our base quickly and grabbed our Giga. Once our army was ready, I tried luring the Manticore over, but in typical Manticore fashion, he just stayed flying in the air. Instead of this, I whistled our epic dino army into battle. Go, 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 go! We were doing somewhat decent damage with our mana Garmar, but we really needed this thing to land. Once he landed, we went absolutely crazy on this thing. The damage our army managed to do was insane! Nice, 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 go, 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 go! Nice! Okay, it hit some of our Terries for quite a good amount though. Some of our Terries were a bit injured, but I had no doubt we would manage to kill this thing with zero casualties. It's landed, it's landed, go, 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 go. Nice, nice, we got a lot of damage in again. It's landing again, it's landing again. Go, boys! How are we doing? How's our army doing? Oh, yeah, we are chilling, bro. We were right on the money, as a few minutes later, this beast was slain. Um, Dunzo! Let's go, we got the Ellie as well. So what engrams did we get from that? Force field rep, teleporter, deadly storage, tech guns, nice. Now that I had the TP engram, it was essential for our progress to craft some teleporters. You know what that means, right? Hitting a giant metal rock with our ankylosaurs cock. Teleporters apparently take a lot of crystal to craft, so we took care of that as well. Luckily for us, we didn't even need to venture into the treacherous depths for Black Pearls. I love this map. On day 59, I turned into our man Gordon Ramsay and cooked up the best filet mignon Antarctica's ever seen. It's Master Chef, not Master <laughs> Today was also the day we crafted up an industrial forge. Sure. The next day, we made a shocking discovery. This, this wyvern milk effect we've been getting. It's from these things. These crystal things, look. Wanna go near them? Boom. And we actually feel hot near them. Knowing this was important, as we could now stay naked in the freezing cold without feeling cold. Whilst admiring my massive junk, a wyvern also wanted some of it, so it blew me. Ah. I nearly died from the wyvern's hot blow, so I got revenge by netting him. Except I missed and ran away just like your girlfriend did. I soon got bored and decided to mess with the dodo wyvern. He may have scared us away this time, but I promise we will put an end to him in a few days. Today soon became our lucky day as we came across a 140 female giga with 25 melee points. You already know what happened next. I don't know who at wildcard decided to make giga's torpor so high, just know that I dislike you very much. The giga nearly woke up, but thank the art gods it didn't as it would have been the end of my keyboard. We nearly creamed our pants again when it tamed. Huh? Oh -ho -ho! And just so you guys know, the chances of this thing getting 39 melee is lower than the chances of a Fortnite player getting a girlfriend. Why are you bullying me? I did for some reason try to tame a Carcodontosaurus again, but we all know how that ended. Day 63 was the day we finally crafted a rep. Sure. This thing was a beauty and would need to be in the most secure environment possible. So I chucked it outside on a stone foundation. The first item crafted in the rep was a tech rifle, which came in pretty handy in the water. Bro, what? The following day, we spotted another 140 Giganatosaurus. Holy... 
it, which we obviously couldn't pass up. Most of the day was wasted taming this thing, as it came out with worse melee damage than our previous one. On our way back home, we made sure to kill every dino that drops a useful tribute, so we can spawn in the next boss on the agenda, the Brood Mother. Upon arriving, we crafted a tech generator, which was useless alone, so we farmed a lot of metal to soon craft some teleporters. Polymer was also needed, so some mantises had to perish. Element was also going to be an issue. Well, not really, as we remembered about those element rocks in the underground. We finally tamed a male Giga. I may have tried taming a Karka again. Sleep of fate, eh? No. 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 To make matters 10 times worse, we lost our lifelong friend. Honestly, screw that thing. We had to get our body back. We had sleeping bags in the area, which was a blessing, or not. Oh, now a UT's on me, bro. Oh my. After smashing my keyboard, I decided to spawn at base and go with a mana armor. Once retrieving my kit, I made sure to get revenge on the two dinos I hated the most. Back at base, we went to craft two teleporters, but could only craft one, so I had to murder the innocent penguins. To celebrate the end of day 69, I wanted to make the gigas have sex, so I threw them out. Whilst your mom's favorite doctor was working his wonders, we crafted the second TP. Soon after, we had our very own giga eggs. We then placed the teleporter and oh my god, we were making progress. The following day, I ventured out to the snow, more specifically, to that really cool cave we saw earlier, as I wanted to make it our home. I began placing some foundations to sketch out the skeleton of our base. The cave's floor was slanting, which is a bit sub-ideal, but nothing my massive brain can't work around. A generator was placed, and right after came the teleporter. Oh boy, I was hyped. We teleported back to base and started crafting a crap ton of structures for our new home. After nearly sleeping on my monitor, we were finally able to place all of our ceilings. We did eventually run out of stone, so we were left with no option but to break all of the rocks with my Doed's massive team. Days passed by so quickly when you're busy building. Once the flooring was done, we chucked all of our loot inside our dinosaurs and teleported everything over. Day 75 was spent building the inside of our new cave. We finally had enough eggs to craft a hatchery, which shall be insane for our progress. To celebrate our new base, I made the Gigas have s again. Our boy Johnny was sadly replaced by his own son. We may have found the coldest place in all of Antarctica, by the way. This area was so cold, I was dying whilst wearing fur. Oh, hello there! We finally claimed a baby Managarmar that will get imprinted as we also crafted a nanny, which imprints your dinos for you. Yes, I am lazy and don't want to do it myself. We then set up a Giga attached to a dino leash, card the entrance of our massive cave. This will ensure that any crazy Ohio citizens get their heads bitten off whilst trespassing. Our Giga's hard work was yielding great results, as we had a shit ton of fresh Giga eggs. Anyways, back to the bosses. Our dino armies were pretty much finished. We had Gigas, Terries and Megatheriums, so all we needed were the artifacts and tributes, and a lot of them. So we headed back into the underground with hopes of finding more artifacts. Whilst in the underground, things got a bit sketchy. There were a lot of dinos wanting to kill us, as we were running out of stam quickly. Luckily for us, I managed to jump on a ledge and killed all the aggressors from a range. I have never seen that many reapers in my life. Oh my reapers, bro. One thing's for sure, you won't catch me going in there again. It was finally time to pop those giga eggs, and oh boy, they looked menacing. I may have gone back into the underground again, but it was for a good reason. Carquinos just give so much organic polymer. Holy Jesus. This proved to be a very bad decision, as we lost both of our RGs and our own life. <laughs> no! <laughs> We did go and tame two RGs and spotted a void worm in the process. Slaughtering it gave us a crazy amount of XP. Anyways, we tamed the RGs and managed to get all of our stuff from the underground right after. This may be a bit late to do, but we did finally get our first baby Argentavis. After I started exploring more areas of the map, in hopes of finding more artifacts, this first underwater expedition was a massive fail. We did however come across a pretty cool cave. I soon came to the realization that I needed actual water dinos if we wanted to search for underwater artifacts and also farm underwater tributes, so I set my eyes on taming the giant squids. The first plan of action was to tame a lot of dolphins, as we all know how squid taming goes. Dude, what? I couldn't even tame it, bro! Whilst looking for the giant squids, I came across a little crevice, which led us into a massive underwater cave. It wasn't long before we came across an artifact. 
It also didn't take a long time to nearly get our dolphin killed. But you guys already know, Drizzle clutched up. I wanted to get revenge on this thing, but it didn't really work out. No! No, okay, now we're, we're beyond that. I did luckily use my brain and cry out the dolphin before it died. Aimlessly running away as fast as we could did work out very well, as we found another artifact. Nice. I took a sting to the face as our final warning to leave this place and booted out quicker than your dad did 19 and a half years ago. We spotted another artifact on the way out, so we of course stopped for it. It wasn't long before we came across another underwater cave and a Dunkleo's head sticking through the floor. <laughs> Arc is weird. Before exiting, I made sure to kill all the jellyfish and electric eels, as I really dislike these creatures. We did finally come across a two so. We soon got reminded why the ocean is the worst part about Ark. Holy crap! Look at all that! Look at all those plesios, bro! Look at all those chickens! After looking around a bit more, we finally decided on taming the level 75. Before I did though, I used 110% of my brain power and placed down a bed, as I'm expecting to die. Once the bed was placed, we took a deep dive right into your mama. Attempt 1 didn't go as planned. But fear not, as I am a determined fella, and go back we did. Except this time, we spotted a level 125, which we managed to tame. Psych, I died again. Dude, what? I couldn't even tame it, bro. You know what they say, lads, third time is the charm. We tamed it. Come, come, come. Passive, come. Yes! Yes, we did it! 37 HP, that is so, that's so high. We saddled this beast and began leveling it up by getting revenge on all the wildlife that previously made our life miserable. Our Tuso was getting so strong that we were killing other giant squids in a few seconds. We did go on a shark killing spree for the shark to tribute and in a matter of minutes we had farmed up all of the water tributes we needed. Before exiting the ocean, we came across a place that looked a bit sus. The f is this? I then spotted an Alpha Rex which soon became breakfast for our newly raised 100% imprinted 39 melee giga that kill alone gave our giganathosaurus 61 levels bringing it up to 640 percent melee damage oh my look at the melee on this thing bruh we later came across a giant bubble which for some reason didn't let my managarmor enter so i reported it for discrimination upon walking inside i soon realized your mom would have loved to be here as the sus looking rocks were back i made my way through the infestation of sus rocks with one thought in my mind it's probably better i keep it to myself upon making it to the center of the bubble, I looted the drop, which didn't have anything too great. Shoot! Day 84 started by raising even more gigas. The bosses were in serious trouble. I then built a ramp up from our new breeding area. The rest of day 84 wasn't very eventful, as I just farmed resources for all of it. The following day, I really wanted to set up another teleporter, so after a quick pit stop for some black pearls, I set up a tech generator and teleporter right near the pyramid. And yes, I did build it on wood foundations, but I do not care. It was time to summon the broodmother, so I settled up all of our megatheriums and gigas. Healing them up was the next course of action, and once our army was all ready, we headed to the pyramid and chucked all of the tributes in the terminal. Uh, so, when this closes, the broodmother should spawn somewhere outside, like what happened last time. And just like last time, the brood did spawn outside the pyramid. This may have been a stupid idea, but we started chucking out our army a few meters away from the giant spider. I think it's coming towards us. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. Luckily, I was quick enough and there were no casualties. I loved out the army in a safer area this time and charged right into battle. Go boys, go! Go! Attack! Oh, we are destroying this thing. Yeah, this thing really stood no chance. <laughs> right after asserting dominance over the broodmother, I dashed back into the water and farmed more water tributes. Yes, the ocean's population decreased by 69.69%. How dare you! After rising from the treacherous depths, we spotted a giant turtle, which we slaughtered. The environmentalists definitely hate me right now. We now had everything we needed to summon the dragon, except an artifact in an underwater cave we previously visited and missed completely, as I am in fact blind. After penetrating the tiny crack, as that's what I do best, we grabbed the artifact and went right back to the pyramid. I lobbed out all of our gigas.
and decided to not use any other dinos this time, except for the U-Tyrannus, which its sole purpose was to scream. Now that I think about it, it kind of reminds me of your mother. It was time for war, we spawned the dragon in, and bro was stuck. I may have forgotten that dragons spit fire, but our mana garmar survived. I dashed down to our gigas and whistled them in, and this thing got cooked. Attack! Yeah, okay, I don't think this guy stands a chance, bro. He's not even doing anything. <laughs> nah, bosses are way too easy with gigas, bro. The only boss left to do before summoning the Ice Titan was the Megapithecus, which we pretty much had everything for except for the artifacts. There was a massive problem, however. I couldn't find the cave until we did. I slid right inside this tiny crevice and soon realized that this cave would be no joke. Just a few meters in, and I already found a frozen body of a previous survivor stupid enough to do what I shall be doing right now. Luckily, the fur armor he used was still intact and was actually much, much better than ours, so I ripped it right off his body. This cave might be the coldest place on earth, but it did leave me flabbergasted by how good it looked. I did eventually get tired of walking, so I threw out our mana garmar. The dinos in here seemed to be very high level, meaning we needed to be on our best game possible. Beamer's ice breath made quick work of a pack of bears and yetis, right besides this mass slaughter were two artifacts, leaving us with only one more. Devour and pack. Okay, we have one more artifact to get. Another dead survivor was found, and we looted everything he had on him, along with recording his dead body, which made me feel a bit like Logan Paul. As I traveled deeper into the cave, I turned into Indiana Jones and grapple glitched over some of the angry dire bears. Oh, holy shit! Holy shit, that gave me a fright. Oh my. <laughs> oh. I nearly had a heart attack. We finally found the last artifact and made our way out. Still, Perlovia decided to nearly ruin our day. No! Hey yo! Bye, have a great time! No! Oh my god! I have no idea how I survived that one. I made sure to get revenge on that thing and dashed straight for the exit. Once outside, curiosity soon got the best of me and I wandered right into a mesh hole. Huh? What? We just lost everything on our mana armor and everything we had on us, including the artifacts. I hate Ark. I ventured back into the cave and snagged the artifacts once more. It went way smoother than last time and we were ready to spawn in the Mega Pithecus, which went, well, as expected. Attack, attack, attack. Oh my god, bro. It's getting destroyed. Yeah, this isn't even... Holy crap. That wasn't even a challenge. We now had all of the boss trophies to summon the Ice Titan. All that was missing was the Artifact of the Void. So on day 91, we went exploring a cave that seemed to be home to an extinct civilization. Perhaps it was owned by the same people that we had seen frozen in the Ice Cave. Their gear and technology were second to none, providing me with a really good riot shield and an ascendant compound bow. I vouched to use this gear to the best of my abilities and take down the Ice Titan for once and for all. Exploring this fascinating civilization soon led me to what seemed to be their crafting area. It appears to me that they just had reached tech tier before going extinct, judging by the little tech structures over here. Anyways, I couldn't find the artifact of the void anywhere, so I paid my respects to this fallen civilization and headed on out to carry on my mission, until a raptor decided to grab me by the neck. Oh, bro. Luckily for us, our new fur armor held up well. We kept searching for the artifact until I saw something shining at me through the ice of a frozen lake. Upon investigation, I was certain it was an artifact, and possibly the artifact of the void. I searched for its entrance and raced inside, bypassing all the scary creatures that would probably bite my head off if I go too close. For some reason, the artifact just wouldn't let me loot it. I was also getting a bit nervous being so close to a big snake. To be fair, it kind of reminds me of my giant pee. Upon further investigation, with the awesome spyglass, it indeed was the artifact we needed. After attempting to loot it once more from all angles, I had enough, so I decided to lob a frisbee at a tree. I lost all hope in myself. I took another dive into the water and still couldn't access this thing. I even went in ghost mode, maybe that would help. Can I access it now? No? Why can't I access it, bro? Due to this, I was left with no choice but to spawn the artifact in. If any one of you comments, that's cheating, in the comments, I will resort to finding your Minecraft Skyblock base and blow it up with TNT. Day 93 was spent killing corrupted gigas, as I completely forgot we needed corrupted hearts to summon the Ice Titan. And finally, on day 94, it was time. Taking down this beast shall be by far our hardest task yet. So I made sure to create the biggest army Antarctica has ever seen. Yes, even our farming dinos shall be going into battle. 
friends and family, my brothers, we unite today for a cause much greater than us. I have no idea what I'm saying. After the best pep talk in human history, I spawned in the Ice Titan, or so I thought. Don't tell me we spawned there. Oh, wait, the Ice Titan's here. Wait, whoa. <gasps> Yeah, apparently the Ice Titan has the ability to resurrect all the bosses from the dead. I was worried we had absolutely no chance beating this map now. The Manticore decided to be its usual self and wander around in the air. I took this opportunity to whistle our army onto the Ice Titan. Attack boys, attack! Go! We're damaging it, we're damaging it. Nice. No, our Krokop died. Even though some of our weaker dinosaurs started to die, we were getting in a lot of good damage. The Megapithecus soon joined the party. Yo, I'm tired. Oh, the monkey's in. The monkey's in, boys. Yes, yes, we're gonna kill the Titan. We're gonna kill the Titan. Kill it, boys, kill it. Oh, even the monkey's going down. Nice. But this wasn't good enough to outpower our army. And before you know it, both the Ice Titan and the White Harambe were slaughtered. The dragon was the next on the menu, and he seemed to malfunction as he just stayed still whilst our army munched him down. Oh no. Oh my. We eventually managed to find the broodmother that was munching on a solo Teresina. I wish the rest of our army in, and she was toast. Get her, boys. Let's go, boys. The last boss standing in the way of us and our mission, the Manticore. This fight went like any other typical Manticore fight. The stupid thing just flew in the air for half an eternity till it eventually landed and died. Yes, he landed, he landed. Get him, boys. Yes, let's go. And as day 95 was about to start, our mission was complete. But Drizzle, it's only day 95 and the title of the video said- Shut up. Did you seriously think Drizzle would disappoint you like that? Remember that dodo-headed wyvern? Yes. It may be a very stupid idea, but it does sound very fun. Before attempting to take down the beast, I crafted a tech suit. I'll definitely be able to get all of the girls with this. I spotted the dodo wyvern, except it had evolved into a much higher level, boasting 3.7 million HP. Yeah, we were in trouble. I threw out my gigas, and the dodo wyvern seemed to dislike this as it started attacking us. I whistled all of our soldiers to bite his ass, but they couldn't do much as he was just flying in the air. It was also doing tremendous amounts of damage. I needed to get the rest of the army out, so I risked my life and hovered in the air, lobbing out all of our reinforcements. Seeing my gigas being useless, I took matters into my own hands and started shooting arrows at the beast. To make matters worse, the dodo wyvern called for reinforcements, which looked scary at first, but our gigas quickly munched through them. We fought this thing for hours and hours on end. It was now down to only a third HP, but the same could be said for a lot of our army. We had to keep pushing through. Even our boy Johnny ended up dying in battle. We had to avenge him. And as the day came to a close, the dodo wyvern had fallen. Yes. Two more may have spawned right after, so I decided to tell them hello. Not my smartest decision. No. I crafted a tech suit, led a giga off a cliff, and looted my body bag. To celebrate our victories, I threw out all of our dinos and spent all of the last days munching through anything we came across. Day 100 boys, sheesh! If you made it this far, comment dodo balls. Let's confuse everyone in the comments boys, just everyone comment dodo balls. I'd also like to thank and give a huge shout out to the creator of this incredible map, Wawegu. He is a very talented map modder, so shout out to you. Without you man, we would never be able to play on this map. Apart from that, this video was inspired by Granty's Antarctica 100 day video, so massive, massive shout out to him as well. Drizzle out! Subscribe.